Hi everyone and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. So today this is going to be a response video to Marty Rathman and the video that he put up, uh, I don't know, four or five days ago or whatever, um, about me or more specifically about the episode of Scientology in the Aftermath that had um, part of the story about my involvement in Scientology and my twin brother. And it was season six, episode one. So Mar Marty put up a video talking about this episode and trying to poke holes in the story. Or what he's trying to do is really invalidate the entire narrative of Scientology and the aftermath. And he's trying to paint this picture where Mike Render and Leah Remini are just reimagining all of these people's stories. And that this is scripted television and they're putting words in people's mouths. And... Um, and basically, he's trying he's trying to portray the, the 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 entire series as just as just false, as full of lies. And the 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 video that Marty put up about my episode was just one of many that he's been putting up. And you know, when I saw mine, I was one surprised that he didn't even really say anything all that bad. Even though I found myself getting really pissed off that he was questioning the integrity of the story like he didn't attack me personally in ways that he's attacked other people like Amy Scobie and Tom DeVox and Mike Render. his attacks on me were not personal he was just trying to poke holes in my story um and so on the one hand I was somewhat pleased that he wasn't trying to assassinate my character um and on the other hand I couldn't help but be quite outraged at the fact that he's trying to say that all these stories are bullshit and not interesting. And it probably made me more mad than it should have. Um, and uh, some people have told me, don't bother doing a response video. Uh, there's no, uh, no one takes Marty seriously. No one's watching. No, no one actually thinks he's telling the truth. And there, there's no reason to really give him the time of day. And I decided to do it anyway as, as a case study. And uh, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Like, I did a video about um, taking apart, deconstructing the hate website that the Church of Scientology put up about me. Um, and the reason I did that video is because it occurred to me that even though I didn't believe anyone actually believes what's on those websites, um, the church has put up websites about every single person that appeared in season one of Leah Remini's TV show. It's never even crossed my mind that anyone actually believes what's in those websites. But it did cross my mind that people might wonder to what degree that information is fabricated out of whole cloth or to what degree it's just embellished or exaggerated or if they do in fact sometimes use kernels of truth and because i can speak to the truth of the information on the website they put up about me i thought it would be very instructive to just go through it point by point and actually tell the story what were the small kernels of truth that the church used to then wrap them up in this, to, into these giant falsehoods and i went through it point by point not to clear up the record on me but to show how the church arrives at these, um, or arrives with these pieces of information that they try to use against people. So one thing that I found very interesting while watching Marty's video, and really, I, I particularly, I, I'm, a, I'm an authority on the video he did about me, and I just feel this is likely to be true for the videos he did to others. The believability of the information in Marty's videos is even less than the believability of the information on the church's websites. That the, that the hate websites that the church has put up on these people who participated in the show. And the reason I say that is because at least the information in the, the websites the church has put up, and I, I'm speaking about mine, at least their giant falsehoods wrapped up with kernel, uh, wrapped around kernels of truth. Marty's statements in his videos aren't even wrapped around kernels of truth in, in some ways that makes them more disturbing like you have to like does he believe what he's saying i don't know is he reading a script from the church of scientology i don't know but even someone writing a script if they were handing him a script you think would construct their falsehoods around kernels of truth so that you know, at least it could be somewhat defensible. I don't want to go, I don't want this video to be too long winded. I don't want it to be too long. I want it to be easily digestible. Um, and so what I've done, even though Marty's video is 16 minutes long, there's really only about four or five minutes where he's even talking about me. Uh, I'm going to show small segments and then I'm going to discuss them. One thing I want to comment on before I start showing video clips. Before Marty started putting up videos attacking the credibility of everyone who appeared in season one of Leah's show. 
he put out 21 short videos attacking the credibility of Lawrence Wright and the book he wrote about Scientology called Going Clear. Now Marty went through this book and decided to take great issue with minor factual inaccuracies that crept into the final version of Larry's book. I cannot off the top of my head recall what these inaccuracies are, but I remember hearing when this book came out that there were some very unfortunate inaccuracies around some things you don't want to be inaccurate. It was either LRH's birth, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday or the publication date of Dianetics, just as an example of something that is very unfortunate for that kind of a mistake to slide through, but at the same time has absolutely no bearing on the actual content of the book. Yet Marty's argument is that all of these little inaccuracies are just proof of the terrible research process that Larry Wright and his staff go through and somehow it invalidates the entire book. Why am I mentioning this? Marty Rathman apparently doesn't know how to say my name. <laughs> Marty Rathman, as he's going through this, doing this video about me, is constantly looking down at these notes that he's prepared. I mean, he stares at his notes for inordinate amounts of time. Apparently, he spent so much time going through my episode and all the others and making uh, uh, <laughs> meticulous notes of contradictions and whatever, um, but somehow he couldn't get my name right. My name is Aaron Smith Levin. Marty knows that. So I don't know if he's intentionally saying my name. He calls me Aaron Levin Smith through the entire freaking video. Aaron Levin Smith. Levin Smith. Levin Smith. Um, anyway, what, is, what does that say? That he doesn't know my name? He can't get my name right? Well, I don't think it says that much, to be honest. But I'm just pointing out that Marty would like you to believe Larry Wright's whole book is BS because he got some dates wrong. And yet, somehow, what he says about me is accurate and he can't even get my name right. Anyway, just a little anecdote. All right. Let's look at the first clip. This is only 30-some seconds long. Here we go. And so Aaron begins his segment off with a big lie. He says, I was in Scientology until two years ago. Outright lie. He's been out of Scientology since 2009. He's been in communication with myself and Mike Rinder since 2009. Eight years. Acting as a mole and a spy in a Scientology company because it was paying him very well and he didn't want to come a cropper with those people. So... <clears throat> He pretended like he was a Scientologist, so he continued to profit and get intelligence, which made it import important with his with his idol, Mike Rinder. Okay, so in this clip, Marty says, Aaron begins, uh, begins the entire sub segment off with a lie. Aaron says, I was in Scientology until years ago, until two years ago. That's an outright lie. He's been out of Scientology since 2009. He's been in communication with me and Mike Rinder since 2009. He's been acting as a mole and a spy in a Scientology company because it was paying him really well. And he didn't want to come a, copper with, come a cropper with those people. So he pretended like he was a Scientologist so he could continue to profit and gain intelligence, which would make him an important idol with his with which would make him important with his idol, Mike Rinder. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on all this. I'm just going to go through this as quickly as I can. Aaron starts off the segment with a lie by saying he was in Scientology until you two years ago. Okay, I was officially declared a suppressive person by the Church of Scientology in March of 2014. That is what it means to be kicked out of Scientology. Now this phrase, I was in Scientology until two years ago, is 100% accurate. You're in Scientology until you're no longer in Scientology. There's no contract you sign that makes you a Scientologist. There are contracts that you sign to work for the Church of Scientology, but there are many, many criteria one could go through to decide whether one is or is not a Scientologist. Some of the criteria that I just jotted down here, because I thought it would be interesting. How do we define when someone is in Scientology? Here's some of the ways I define whether someone is in Scientology. Uh, the Church of Scientology has not officially declared you to no longer be a Scientologist. When the Church of Scientology calls you, you still answer the phone. When the Church of Scientology asks you to do something, you still agree to do it. <clears throat> Scientologists are still allowed to associate with you. You still have a lifetime membership in the Church of Scientology. All of your friends are still Scientologists. Your employer is a Scientologist. 
Your spouse is a Scientologist. Your children go to a private school run by Scientology, run by Scientologists. You have never publicly or privately departed Scientology. You have never publicly said anything critical of Scientology. All of those things I just said were true for me up until, true in my scenario, up until March 2014, two years prior to the recording of the episode on Leah Remini's show. So Marty explains that the reason he can say that's an outright lie is because I've been out of Scientology since 2009. 2009 is when the Tampa Bay Times wrote their Truth Rundown series of articles, exposing stuff about the upper echelons of Scientology that I had never been exposed to before. And I have said in any interview I have ever done that those articles in 2009 was the beginning of the end for me as far as my prison of belief I was in regarding Scientology. Marty then says, oh, he's been, Aaron has been in communication with me and Mike Rinder since 2009. So Marty would have you believe, which is this, this is the same talking point the Church of Scientology would have you believe. Anybody who speaks to someone that has been kicked out of the Church of Scientology is immediately no longer a Scientologist. Like, that's what the Church of Scientology says when it's trying to explain why they don't want someone, I, I won't even go down that road. Uh, but that's what the Church of Scientology says. So Marty would like to say that because I did get into communication with him in 2009, that I ceased to be a Scientologist in 2009. What cracks me up about this is that even Marty still considered himself to be a Scientologist in 2009. He did not throw off this label of being a Scientologist until years, years later when he started to diverge um, in his viewpoint, in his point of view, from other people who left the church. And he no longer wanted to associate himself with this word Scientology because he felt like it was too um, toxic. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm just pointing out, in, in, no, in, in no sense can someone say, I left Scientology in 2009. Like, it's a stupid thing to say. All right. Okay, fine. Um, oh, and just uh, for there. Oh, Aaron acted as a mole and a spy in a Scientology company. Now I did act as a mole and a spy, feeding Marty information about what was happening in Scientology. He makes it sound like I was a spy in my Scientology company. When in 2009, when well, I'm trying to make sure I'm uh, remembering the, the proper timeline of all of this. In 2009 is when I started working for Kurt Feshback at Falcon Research, his investment research company, uh, doing research on publicly traded companies, mostly to, to short stocks. And I started out at that company making $50,000 a year. Does that sound like a lot of money to anybody? It shouldn't, because it's not. So first of all, I was not being a spy. I was not spying on Kurt Feshback or Falcon Research. In fact, one of the things that got me in trouble with the Church of Scientology is that I came, I haven't told this whole story yet, I'm not gonna be able to tell the whole story right now, is that I was posting comments on Marty's blog and Mike Rinder's blog in defense of Kurt Feshback. That is how the church knew I was writing comments on blogs because I was a little too specific in these posts I was doing, defending Kurt Feshback against people that, against attacks I felt were being levied against him that were unfair. So I don't want, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just countering this idea that I was somehow acting as a spol, uh, as a, as a spy or a mole in a Scientology company. I was feeding Marty a lot of information about what was happening in Scientology at that time, but it was Marty I was giving the information to, not Mike Rinder. Mike Rinder hadn't even started his blog. Now, I should go back and double check exactly when Mike started his blog. Um, but Mike didn't start his blog until Marty pretty much stopped. And, and, and I even got an email from Marty acknowledging me, commending me for the wonderful value I was providing to the movement of, uh, you know, that, that I was doing more good from within than I could be doing from without. And I shouldn't have any qualms about secretly being under the radar. And now he's trying to somehow assassinate my character that I continued to live in the Scientology bubble 
between 2009 and 2014 when I was officially kicked out of Scientology. So he says, um, so that I continued, uh, so I acted as a mole and a spy in a Scientology company because it was paying me really well. $50,000 when I started working there in 2009 and I was only making $70,000 when I stopped working there in 2000, the end of 2013. That might be good money to some people. That's not good money, okay? Um, it's a it's it's a little uh, douche bag ish to actually talk about dollars and cents, um, but I feel like it's necessary to counter what Marty's saying here. When I um, was booted out of Scientology and laid off from my job, and my wife was laid off from her job, and my kids were kicked out of school, and I was forced to go into business for myself, which I never would have done, just left to my own devices. I literally 10x'd my income in the first year. You can do the math. Literally 10x'd. And then that doubled the next year. So the idea that the reason I stayed in Scientology was to continue to profit is absurd. People stay in Scientology because they don't want to lose their families and their friends and their spouses and their children and their jobs. But Marty would have you believe it's out of a profit motive. Go fuck yourself, Marty. Okay. Um, next video clip. Here we go. The next thing he says is absolutely false. He says, I'm the 16 year old kid or however old he was, and I'm going to the Scientology event. I see David Miscavige talking about what, about what happened with the IRS and how it was this big, um, you know, 30 years of persecution were overcome and it was proven that Scientology entitled to exemption and exemption was gotten, right? And he said, and I was watching it in awe, only to later find out it was all bullshit. Except the problem is it wasn't all bullshit. Virtually everything that was said there, in fact, the entire thing was backed up by documents, okay? Virtually everything that was said there was true, okay? Like David Miscavige or not, like Scientology or not, what Aaron Levin Smith saw at that thing that he said were the false representations that then lured him in and made this whole thing fraudulent to him weren't false in the first place. They were true. So there's no story. If if that's wrong, there's no story. And I'm telling I'm telling you, there's no. It's wrong. So he wasn't lured in through false representations. All right. This one is truly one of the funniest things that I've um, that I've seen come out of Marty's mouth. So he goes, he goes. Okay, the next thing Aaron says that's absolutely false is that uh, oh, he was a 16 year old kid when he was watching this uh, international Scientology event where they announced that the IRS had finally granted Scientology tax exemption. Marty, if you've watched my episode, and forget my episode, you know me. Marty knows me from Flag. I'm not going to define what Flag is right now. Marty knew my brother. Marty knows the information. I wasn't even 16 years old yet when I finished my training at the Flag Land Base after three years, 364 and a half days a week, 110 hours a week, um, from the ages of 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old. I wasn't even 16 when I finished my training and was sent back to Philadelphia to be a full-time staff member at the Church of Scientology in Philadelphia. Okay, now I don't want to beat this to death about my age, but I was 12 or maybe had just turned 13 years old during the event that Marty's referring to. And the reason I thought this is the funniest thing is Marty's literally taking issue with the recollection of a 12-year-old about about an event that discusses the details of the IRS's war with Scientology. He's taking issue with this. Um, okay, so, and he goes, and he, he's putting words in my mouth. He's saying that I watched this event and I was in awe of it. And then only later found out that everything in the event was bullshit. And, th and that somehow the fact that this entire event was a lie, um, somehow he's putting words in my mouth that this means like all of Scientology is a lie. Oh my God, dude. I only made one comment about this event in the episode of Leah's show. And all I said is that growing up in Scientology, I was always led to believe that David Miscavige had single-handedly 
one Scientology IRS recognition as a fully tax exempt religion for the first time ever. And that's kind of the impression you're given in this event, okay? I never knew until recently that Scientology used to have tax exemption and you know religious recognition from the IRS. I know the IRS doesn't officially recognize religions, but just understand what I'm saying here. Scientology used to be tax exempt. And then the IRS found that L. Ron Hubbard was using the organization's money for his own personal gain, and they took the tax exempt status away. That is all I ever said about this event. That's all I ever said. I've never said anything publicly or privately about this event being all full of, all full of shit. Marty, Marty just says that I've said this and somehow he's going to poke holes in my argument. So he, he's created an argument that I never made, which is that this whole event was bullshit. And he's defending my argument. He's defending against that argument by saying, and actually this is, this is really funny. He says, virtually everything in that event was true. Okay. Well, not only did I not say that the event wasn't true, but Marty even acknowledges that there's false things in the event. Marty, why would the Church of Scientology ever put false information into its international events? You're not doing any, you're not doing the church any favors here. I know you're kind of like being their little, uh, you know, attack dog and you're not doing them any favors. What? I, I, I hope you saw the clip that I played because he goes, everything in the event, no, he goes, virtually everything in the event uh, everything in the event, uh, virtually everything in the event was true. Anyway, I, I shouldn't beat this to death, but just, just understand at least the church's website takes a kernel of truth and then wraps a whole bunch of nonsense around it. Marty's not even wrapping his nonsense around something true to begin with. I never said anything in that event was false other than the representation that that this was being done for the first time, that we'd been being persecuted by the IRS, that Scientology had been being persecuted by the IRS since day one, and that this, for the first time, was the end of that war. When in reality, there was a period in time when there was no war with the IRS. Okay, that's the end of that point. Um, okay, he also says, he says that, uh, he's claiming that I'm saying that the wonderful things in this event lured me into Scientology and is what got me to join Scientology and join staff. And that then I find out it's all bullshit and so then I feel like I've been tricked and suckered into getting it, being gotten into Scientology. This is total madness. I was 12 years old. I've tried to uh, compare the dates. There's a chance I had just turned 13. You think that as a 13 year old going to school I saw an event about Scientology getting tax exempt status and I said, you know what I want to do? I want to go work for the Church of Scientology. No, I've never said that. That's not what happened. It's what got my mom to want to join staff again because she had been previously on staff. It's what got her to want to join staff again, except she was taking care of four kids and then helping to homeschool a couple of her friend's kids. And the problem was, how could these adults join staff if they're responsible for these kids? And then the solution became, let's get the kids to join staff. <laughs> it wasn't me. I've never said that that event got me into Scientology. My mom got into Scientology when I was four years old. Um, that event didn't get me to join staff. My mom convinced me to join staff. And yes, the, the event was the catalyst for that, but not for me personally. So I don't know where Marty's getting his script from. I don't know where he's getting his conclusions from. If you want to trash people and if you want to assassinate their characters or their credibility, you should really do a better job of it. Next clip is only 40 seconds long. Here we go. The fact of the matter is, is we do know is that Mike is laying these down, and I do know from firsthand knowledge that he does have knowledge that, they're, that these are false premises. And we also know that he's been doing nothing other than for eight years being paid um, to act as an authority to produce such 
manufacture such negativity about Scientology. That's what he got paid for. That's what Levin Smith paid him for. That's what Mike Bennett paid him for. That's what Omblad paid him for. That's what Argyle paid him for. That's what the Garcias paid him for, $175 an hour. Um, and that's what Lee is paying him for. All right. So here we have here Marty continuing to try to characterize Mike as someone who for the last eight years or whatever since he's left Scientology has done nothing but find sugar daddies to give him money so that he can dedicate his time to just talking smack about Scientology. This is so ridiculous. So point by point, this will only take a sec. Um, so he says, that is what Levin Smith, I'll just say my name correctly for uh, my own sake. That is what Smith Levin paid him for. Mike Rinder spent two years working with me in my investment research business. Okay, I paid him a salary. He, was a f he worked with me full time, 40 hours or more per week. I can guarantee you, I was not paying Mike Rinder to talk negatively about Scientology. I was paying him to work and he did full time and did a great job for me right up until the time that he had this, that had this um, project that I'm really glad he took the opportunity to participate in, which is Leah Remini's show. And Mike took a pay cut from what I was paying him to go work on Leah's show. Okay. So I'm going to call right now bullshit on Marty representing that Mike has full time just been being paid to talk smack about Scientology. I paid Mike to work and Mike did a great job. Okay. He mentions that's what Mike Bennett paid him for. Mike Bennett has never paid Mike Rinder a dollar. Marty doesn't even know what he's talking about. That's what Mike Bennett paid him for. That's what Omblod paid him for. Robert Omblod is a businessman entrepreneur who hired Mike to help him bring some of his works to market. Um, this story has been told. I won't rehash it here. But how do we know Mike Rinder was actually doing real work for Robert Omblod and Robert wasn't just paying him to talk smack about Scientology? Because there's a story out there, I'll try to link to it if, if I can find it, of Robert and Mike and some investors who were looking to buy Robert's invention or, or buy his business. I don't know the details of that part of it. And they're having a meeting in a, in a, in a, a hotel business center, like a conference room type thing. And the Church of Scientology's goons at Freedom Magazine bust in the door to the meeting with their fake reporter and their bullshit fake news cameras and their microphones and their lights. And they bust open the door and they interrupt this meeting to interview all these people and pepper them with these, you know, TMZ type questions about, you know, uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, questions like, you know, do you still beat your wife kind of questions. Like, how do you feel knowing that, you know, you're, <laughs> you're employing a religious bigot? They interrupted a business meeting and destroyed the deal. So why is that relevant? Because that meeting never would have been even happening if, if Mike wasn't actually working for Robert. It's just a small example, but it's an example of how it, it just, it just proves that what Marty's saying is bullshit. Um, he said, that's what Argyle paid him for. I'm sure Marty's talking about Matt Argyle. I have absolutely no idea what relationship Matt Argyle ever had with Mike Rinder. I can't say there was or wasn't one. I don't know the details of that. That's what the Garcias paid him for, $175 an hour. The Garcias have been wrapped up in litigation with the Church of Scientology for years. And Mike Rinder happens to be one of the world's foremost experts on the Church of Scientology and its policies and procedures and its organizational structure and its harassment techniques. Okay, so if the Garcia's lawyer pays Mike a consultant fee to help guide them through the morass and the labyrinth that is the Church of Scientology, that is not paying Mike Rinder to talk smack about Scientology. Anyway, I, Mike doesn't need me to come to his defense. Mike, you know, I know Mike has decided not to respond to anything that Marty has said, but this is me just putting out some of the facts here. Marty is full of it. All right, next clip. The emotional pleas, the false statements of Rinder and the emotional pleas by Leah get so thick that you lose sight 
some of the, of the import of some of the things that Levin Smith is saying. The whole thing's about how he was disconnected from his brother. Yet, if you listen to what he actually says, his brother disconnected from him. His brother got into the anti-Scientology environment and told Aaron and his mother, who were in Scientology, I don't want to ever hear from you guys again. He disconnected from them. But you would never know that, or you would never get that impression because of all the pile on by Rinder and Remini. Okay. So in this clip, Marty, I, I don't know. I don't know where. Okay. Marty's trying to act like it's some sort of a revelation that before me and my mother were required to disconnect from my brother, he had sent us an email disconnecting from us. He's acting like this is news. Do you know how Marty knows this? Because I said it in the goddamn show. What? You think... You think all of the hours and hours and hours that went into editing that show, it just accidentally slipped by? You know it because I said it. And Mike and Leah and the producers left it in the show because they decided to. It wasn't an accident. He's trying to act like this whole emotional you know, uh, this emotional plea that's being made in the show is that somehow me and my mom were victimized by the Church of Scientology when my brother was officially declared or kicked out of the church and we were required to disconnect from him. That is not the point of the story of my episode. Not only is it not the point, no one ever says that. I say in the show, that I wrote one of the reports on my brother and turned it into the church that got him kicked out of the church, knowing it was gonna get him kicked out of the church. It's part of the story. Marty acts like it's a revelation that um, because of all the piling on that Mike and Lee are doing, somehow this just gets completely missed. Who the fuck missed it, Marty? Nobody missed it. It's in there. He says, you'd never get that impression from all of the piling on that Mike and Leah are doing. Really? Who wouldn't get that impression? They came out of my mouth in English words. Okay, let's look at the next clip. This is the last one. Here it is. So this is how absurd it gets. So Aaron's ex going to explain away why he disconnected from his father, but didn't really disconnect because that, of course, that would make him seem somehow less than virtuous. So he says, I sent the letter, but I never intended to disconnect. Wait a second, Aaron. That is impossible according to the narrative that Remini and Rinder have been busy piling on since before episode one in her cheesy book in the 2020 or the ABC show and the seven episodes that preceded you. They've described an East German level of control where you must do these things and there's no exceptions but, but Aaron just you know in, so that he can continue to be painted as one of the good guys he, he belies that entire narrative he's oh yeah you could just PR it and say I'm disconnecting and not disconnect that's what I did with my dad Okay, last one. We're gonna make. We're gonna wrap this up here. Oh my God, Marty, you characterize that I said I sent my father a letter of disconnection, but I didn't really mean it. What show did you watch, Marty? Was it mine, or did the church just give you a bullet point? list of things it wanted you to say and you didn't even watch the goddamn show i never said i sent my father a letter of disconnection when i was getting married to my wife in the sea org it came up that my brother who had been declared and officially kicked out was still in touch with my father okay right, let's take a step back the reason this came up is because i had to ask permission to get married to my wife Watch the whole episode. I explain it a little more. And permission was denied. <laughs> permission was denied. Part of the reason was my brother had been declared and kicked out of the church. 
and was still in touch with my father. And that I still spoke with my father two or three times a year. I'm going to say two because, you know, Christmas and my birthday. And we would talk on the phone for 10 or 15 minutes twice a year. But that's still considered me being connected to my father. And because my wife worked in a higher level organization than me in the Sea Org, they took these things more seriously with her than they normally would have with just me. And they're like, well, now that you're getting married to Heather, you, you know, we're holding you to this higher standard. So you cannot get married to Heather if you're still connected to your father because your father's connected to your brother. And considering I was in the Sea Org at the time, very, you know, got the blinders on, very single-minded, very focused. And considering that I only spoke to my father for like 20 minutes a year at that point, uh, and considering I wanted to get married, I signed a form agreeing to disconnect from my father. I never sent my father a disconnection letter. Maybe to some people the difference isn't important. Uh, to me, the difference is actually quite important. Because it's one thing to actually disconnect from someone, meaning you, when you send someone a letter of disconnection, you are telling them, I'm never going to speak to you again. I never did that. I just had to write my name on a little piece of paper and then I could get married. I took the path of least resistance. Now, Marty's trying to say that because, um, okay, so Marty characterizes my words as, I sent my father a letter of disconnection, but I didn't really mean it. And he's trying to say that my ability to just casually dismiss this uh, thing that was demanded of me to disconnect from my father, uh, somehow completely contradicts the claim being made throughout the show that the Church of Scientology runs an East German-like control over Sea Org members. So the fact that I would retain even one shred of, uh, of, of principle to myself, that I was signing this paper, but I didn't really mean it. To Marty, that gets the church completely off the hook. Never mind the fact that I'm actually being required to sign a piece of paper saying I will never talk to my father again just so that I can get married to my wife. We're going to ignore that. We're going to ignore that insane scenario. And Marty wants to let the church off the hook and, and call Mike and Leah liars because I go, but I didn't mean it. In my mind, I wasn't disconnected from my father. I was just signing a piece of paper so I could get married. I mean, do you see what's happening here? He hasn't even latched his arguments on to kernels of truth. And I don't know, make, make of that what you will. I, I don't know what to make of, of that, really. I don't know if it's worse than the videos. I don't know if, I mean, if it's worse than the hate websites the church put up, I don't know if that makes it better. But what it does make it is completely fabricated out of whole cloth. That's what it makes it. And if his video on me was this egregious with its fallacies, I have to assume it was the same or very likely to be the same for the others that he's done. All right. So one of the last comments that I want to make here is um, Marty in his videos that he's done. And then the church has taken his words and used them to, they're trying to create confusion between a reality television series, which is largely scripted and a reality show that is in fact a docu series. Uh, Leah Remini, uh, had her own for two or three years, uh, reality show. Uh, what was it called? Oh my God. I'm not going to remember the name of it. Um, uh, I believe it was on, and it was a reality show. It was about her life. It followed around her family, and it was your typical reality show, like a, like the Kardashian reality show. Those shows are scripted. This show that Leah Remini is currently doing, this is not reality TV. In that sense, when someone says reality TV, they they mean it's not they're not actors, but it's still scripted. That's normally what reality TV means. This is a docu series. There is nothing scripted about this. There is nothing rehearsed about these shows. There are not talking points. These are people telling their stories. Marty's never actually reconciled how you can take a real person who's telling a real story and somehow characterize that as scripted. But because Leah Ramini has said that there was um, a scene in her reality show that's not on the air anymore. I I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, there was a scene of a family therapy session and she, ha she has allegedly told Marty that that therapy session scene was scripted. He's trying to use that statement to say that Scientology and the aftermath 
is a scripted show. This is crazy. First of all, on a reality TV show, wait, would any therapist with a license allow a television crew to come in and fill, film an actual therapy session? Of course not. And if I have any wrong about that, and there's therapists out there that think that's not a violation of professional ethics, please feel free to comment in the, in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure you could get your license pulled for that. I can't swear to it. I'm not an expert. I'm just saying. Um, again, I, I don't, I'm not going to beat this to death. Uh, there's been efforts to confuse a reality show like Keeping Up with the Kardashians with a docu-series like Scientology and the Aftermath. And I just wanted to, you know, officially comment on what the difference is between that. Okay. Well, that's all I've got. This video has probably gone longer than it should have. And, um, and, and that's all I've got. You can make up your own mind. Feel free to watch his videos. They're laughable. Thank you for watching this video. And, um, that's it. If you like this channel, feel free to subscribe up here. And if you want to see a bunch of other videos, go ahead and click here and here and here. See you guys soon.